Hey now, what's up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and like I said, I am continuing my reviews for Black History Month. This time I'm doing Malcolm X. Malcolm X is a film that came out in 1992. It was directed by Spike Lee, and the plot is well, we're following the life and times of Malcolm X was played by Denzel Washington. It's almost like this movie is in three parts. What you see at the very beginning, he's this young, almost punk kid who gets into trouble and crime and whatnot. Some flashbacks of his childhood. Then you get the middle where he's incarcerated and that's where he gets introduced to the religion of Islam. He falls completely into that. And then you see post prison where he is like the spokesman of Islam and not only that but he's going off and he's fighting racism and sure it's a little extreme but he believes in what he believes in and he's very passionate about it and a lot comes with all of that now what I think of Malcolm X is this movie is amazing it is this is one of Spike Lee, at least one of my favorite Spike Lee movies that he's done. He co-wrote, he directed, he even acts in this movie, which is kind of interesting. I'll get to that. But Denzel Washington just shines. And I'm sure it's not like that's the first time you ever heard that concerning Denzel Washington. This guy brings his A-game each and every single time that you see him in a movie. Never holds back, never lets you down. But... I just, I loved seeing him not only play this guy, but show the different stages of his life. When you see him at the very beginning, I buy him as this sort of cocky uh, young kid who, who he, he kind of wants to fit in. You see him wanting to straight his hair and slick it back, which I don't know anything about. What? And, and he wants to sort of not be white per se, but he definitely wants to be like them. And you see he's dating white women. Uh, he, Not that he wants to be accepted, but he just wants to prove that he's just as good as any one of them. His friend, played by Spike Lee, like I said, Shorty, who, I'm not saying Spike Lee's a bad actor. I just was looking at him the whole time and going like, why? <laughs> why did you put yourself in this movie? It's not the first time he's done this, or the last time. I just kind of, like, we couldn't have put somebody else in that role. Oh, well, who am I to really complain? And, but, again, I like seeing him, uh, Denzel, Michael Max, as Red, as he calls himself. He meets this West Indian Archie uh, gang leader type guy who's very powerful, almost takes him in under his wing, shows him the ropes, shows him how to hustle and do all this stuff. And seeing where that relationship goes is kind of fascinating because it lets you know what type of guy Malcolm X was at that point in his life. That he was willing to do anything, anything to get ahead, to get rich. He was all out for himself. And then when you see him and Shorty and the two women uh, they go off and start like robbing houses to make a little money. Of course, they get caught. And the sentencing that they get, sure, the white women only get like two years. But they get, like, what is it, 13 counts of 8 to 10 years in jail? Holy fuck! <laughs> it's while he's in prison. After all the drugs and all of the crazy life that he's done, he meets this other inmate, Baines, who sort of shows him a new way of thinking, a new way of life, a new religion of Islam. And look, I'm not saying that uh, maybe this movie is trying to sell you on this religion or trying to say like, hey, this religion, this is how you should think. Because when you hear some of it, it's like, that's pretty extreme. It's almost like you're substituting one extreme for another because, sure, racism was 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 very high at this time. It's probably very easy to hate white people or anyone who did the things that they were doing. But this religion is very much like white people are the devil. Each and every single one of them. And you know, you hear that and you kind of go like, well damn, he was very much against 
white people and everything that, that they represented and stood for. Again, you understand it, his background, uh, the stuff with his father who was a preacher and how he was killed by the KKK and just all the anger that comes with that. I get it, I do. Uh, it's more, I say this movie is more of an understanding for the man, the person, more so than trying to get you to feel a certain way. I'm sure if you were black or if you are black and you saw this movie, you might get a lot more out of it than like a white person would. That's the case for a lot of Spike Lee movies, I'm sure. But also, I want to mention Angela Bassett as his eventual wife. And at first I thought you were wasting Angela Bassett. Like, it seemed like she was just there to be his wife and be the woman that would be behind him and have his kids, and that was it. But then she started to get some really great scenes, some really great moments, where she did combat Malcolm X. She did come at him and say, look, are you sure that this religion is everything that they say that they are, and that you can trust your leader, Elijah Muhammad, that he is what he says he is? And she gets in his face, she's pissed that he's always gone, he's never there with the kids. It was those moments where I was like, fuck yeah, that's Angela Bassett. That's her acting that I wanted to see here. She brought it as well. And then that's where some of the most fascinating things came because as, as interested as I was, seeing his backstory and seeing all these events that led up to the, the period in his life that I think we all really know about him, seeing his falling out, with the organization and how he started to realize that maybe this isn't in the up and up. Maybe these people aren't as serious about the cause as he thought that they were. That fascinated me too because some of this stuff was a lot of what I didn't know about Malcolm X. I'll be honest. I knew, I thought I knew a lot, but I didn't. So, seeing all of that, and then, of course, this isn't a spoiler, I'm sure if you don't know this, then you really need to, like, read a book, but his assassination, the way how it plays out in this movie is so disturbing, and so violent, and so shocking, it's like, yeah, you, you knew it was going to happen, uh, and yeah, maybe you could see it coming. There's a lot of foreshadowing throughout the movie with gunshot sounds, but it was brutal. It was brutal to watch. As far as complaints, I don't have much of any complaints. I guess the only thing I can say is that this movie is slightly over three hours long. That's a long movie. Now, I can admit that watching it, I was never bored. I don't know, I can't even point out like which parts I would have cut to make it shorter, but the fact that Denzel Washington did not win Best Actor for this movie, and I mean, I knew this going in, but now just fully watching him, I'm like, how? How can this be? I looked up who won that year instead, and it was Al Pacino for Scent of a Woman. Now, I didn't see this movie, and Al Pacino is a great actor. I'm not saying otherwise. I'm just saying that do you really think, please, somebody who saw that movie with Al Pacino, do you really think he deserved the Oscar over Denzel Washington for this movie? Let's be honest about that. Anyways, guys, I enjoyed this movie. I did. Uh, I'm glad that I'm doing these reviews. Let me know in the comments below if you saw Malcolm X. What did you think of it? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!